Welcome to another video of Fernandez Fine's Adventure and in today's video we will be doing some Adobe Lightroom editing of some of the photos that I've taken on some of my adventures. So for those of you that are new to the channel, basically what I do is I have a truck build, I also have a WRX build and I also have a motorcycle build all going on on my channel at once. But the main focus of my channel is basically to you know go out and do what I really like doing, which is adventuring, taking some photos and things like that. So basically this is a good chance for me and these episodes are a really nice chance just to sit down, go through some of the photos that I've taken and, and show you guys the process that I go through as well. So guys, we're not gonna waste any more time. Let's get stuck into editing. That's what we're here for. So um, yeah, let's do it. So starting with our first photo, I took this one at Barron Falls and we've had a lot of rain recently. So Barron Falls was going very, very quickly. A lot of water was coming over the edge there. So I'm just going to start off by framing it. Now I am going to do this without the framing or without shooting through those trees. So I actually kind of want just that little part there, that little bit of rock there. I want that to be kind of the center of my image. And I actually might zoom it out just a little bit more just to try and make it look a little bit more mysterious. So we've got that I'm going to start now by increasing the temperature to make it look a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more blue. And I might just increase the exposure for now, just a touch. And I'll increase the contrast a little bit, just to give a little bit of, I guess a little bit of definition to some of the leaves and that that's on that little island there. And reducing the highlights does uh, a couple of things, but the main thing is in water is it gives you a little bit more definition in the waves and that. I'm not too sure if I want to decrease that because, you know, if you increase the highlights a little bit, it actually kind of makes it a little bit more mysterious, this little island. So uh, for now, you know, I might just increase it just a little bit just to kind of make it look a little bit cool. I am as well just going to play with these shadows and see what it does. I might actually lift the shadows just a little bit and the whites I will see. I might increase the whites a little bit as well. And uh, I might just lower the blacks to add a little bit of clarity. In my last video that I did, I mentioned that there was an update at some point with Adobe Lightroom where the clarity for whatever reason has almost tripled. So if you go up by say 10 with clarity, it's almost like it's going up by 30. So just keep an eye out for that. My usual measurements are a little bit off. So we're going to go into the vibrance now, just a little bit. And I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with how this is at the moment. And I'll just go back and talk to you about the crop. That crop of four by five, that's your Instagram crop as well. So a lot of these photos that I'll be doing uh, will be the um, four by five, the eight by 10 ratio, just so it looks nice on Instagram. I will have a look at the dehaze as well and just see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm not too keen on that. And the further you go, the worse it looks. So I might actually just decrease it, um, maybe even just a little bit, just to, again, try and make that whole mysterious kind of look going on there. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. So let's do a before and after. Yep, I really like that. That looks nice. So that one was the first one that we will do and the second one we'll move on this one i took uh, i think it must have been a couple of years ago now just at my local train tracks it goes through a nice little forest area so we are going to do another instagram crop here i am going to make the railway as close to the center as possible and i really want that height as well of the trees there so i might just do something like this and for now, I will increase the exposure a little bit just to bring out these trees. A little bit of contrast, a little bit of highlights up. We'll see what the shadows look like. And I'm trying to go for a little bit of a moody sort of a edit here because the dark trees always looks good as a slightly darker edit. And the whites, yeah, 
the whites probably reduce them a little bit. We will do a graduated filter here anyway, and we'll decrease the blacks a little bit. And let's add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrance as well. So let's have a look at that graduated filter. So to use that, you just click the little graduated filter button there, drag it up. My settings are way too low at the moment. I'm just going to keep it at neutral for now and I'm going to decrease the exposure a little bit and add a little bit of clarity just to bring out the detail in those leaves, just a little bit. We'll see how that looks. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. I don't really like this vine kind of coming down here, but you know, it's not too bad. I guess it does give a little bit of framing. So I might be able to move it just a little bit more across and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's a little bit moody. If I want to make it a little bit more moody again, I can just move the slide a little bit over to the blue and I could probably decrease the exposure a little bit as well, but I'm pretty happy with that one. So compared to my last video, you will notice that my mouse and my keyboard are a little bit quieter. So if I just go ahead and just click here into the open space of my computer, so I'm not ruining anything, a lot quieter than my last keyboard and mouse. So uh, hopefully it makes these videos a little bit more enjoyable because when I was editing the videos last time, they were, you know, the, the click was just too loud and it was a bit distracting. So hopefully it's a little bit quieter and it's a little bit more um, relaxing, gives us a bit more of a relaxed vibe. So let's keep going with the edits. Okay, moving on to the next one. And we have got a picture of Scout Hat Island. So this was taken at Palm Cove and I took a number of photos of, uh, or a number of attempts at this photo, I should say, and just trying to get the framing right and also trying to get that focus as well on that um, Scout Hat Island is a little bit tricky, but I actually really like the um, the framing with the uh, the leaves. And so I I find this, this foreground here a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to use my crop and I'm going to pretty much just chop off those bottom waves there. And Scout Hat Island is not quite in the middle. So I am just going to try and make it as close to the middle as possible. So from here, it was very early in the morning. So it was a little bit dark. I was fighting with the light a little bit. So I will increase the exposure a little bit, contrast a little bit again. And I will probably do highlights, reduce them because you see, you can't really see the clouds when it's, when the highlights are up. So I might just reduce the highlights a little bit, which will bring a bit more color into the sky. Shadows, I might decrease the shadows because that will kind of take away kind of the, uh, I guess the grainy sort of uh, look that I've got going here because of the, uh, the high ISO I was shooting at. So uh, I might just decrease the shadows a little bit. It doesn't take away from the island at all. And the whites, yeah, I could probably bring the whites up a little bit and I'll decrease the blacks a little bit as well. And you can see we're starting to try to get that island popping. So let's also move into the clarity, a little bit with the clarity. Uh, again, gotta be careful because especially with low light shots, it can make the, um, the, if you set the ISO really high and you don't have a very expensive camera, it can make the grain stick out a lot more. So you can already see that. So if I decrease the clarity a little bit, you can see the grain disappears as you go lower. So the more you go up, the more that the grain appears, which is not a desired look, but you can normally go a little bit higher without that um, grain really sticking out, especially in Instagram photos. They're so compressed and stuff anyway, you won't see it. Um, Dehazing, yeah, sure, a little bit, but again, same sort of thing as clarity and vibrance. We can increase the vibrance a little bit. However, this time, what we're going to do, we're going to go to our HSL and color slider, and I'm going to have a bit of a play around and see if I can mess with some of these pinks because I distinctly remember when I was shooting this that the sky had a lot more pink in it. It was first thing in the morning, so, you know, it, the sky looked a little bit more interesting than what it's showing here. I'm not really one to try and put more colors back into a photo that weren't even there to begin with. I try to capture the image how I see it. I try not to mess around with it in Photoshop at all. Um, I just want to try and capture the image that I saw and remember that as my memory. So 
for now, what we'll do, let's have a look at this red hue and orange hue. Um, I'm a little bit unsure what color that is. So I might just, um, I might just move these HSL sliders a little bit. You see that there is a little bit of a red in there. So I might increase the saturation of that. And I will also have a look at the orange and maybe change the oranges a little bit more towards a red. Try to get that pinky sky back in it. That's looking really good actually. And I might play around with, might be aqua, might be blue. Um, so there's a little bit of aqua in there, but I might have a look at this blue. Yeah, so we can change the blue to more of a greeny color, but I don't really think that's necessary. Might move it up a little bit just towards the purple. And that's a lot more accurate for what I was looking at at that point in time. The sky had a lot more pinks in it. It looked good this way. So I'm happy with that. So let's do a before and after, the most satisfying part of the whole editing process. So that's before and that's after. So you can tell that I got rid of a lot of the definition and that in those, um, in those palm fronds, which you know just brings a lot more attention to what is um, important, which is the island. And you can see the island is a little bit off center. So I might actually just bring that in a little bit more and we're done. Moving on to the next one now, we have got a picture I took at Lake Placid. So in this photo, it's a little bit tricky because we don't want to take too much away from the water because the water has got um, a nice reflection of the light. But you can see I actually do have this little point here where it starts to kind of swerve back the light, probably the shadow from this mountain here. So I'm probably just going to cut it off there. And then I am going to increase the exposure a little bit, increase contrast, highlights I'm not going to touch. Um, even though if I decrease it, it makes the clouds look good. I'm not going to touch that yet. I'll use a graduated filter for that one. Shadows, I don't want to touch too much because if I decrease it, I'm going to lose the trees. And if I increase it too much, it's going to make it look all blown out and weird. So again, a little bit of a moody vibe here I'm going for. So let's increase that shadows a little bit. Let's keep the whites the same and blacks. Yeah, doesn't really matter. It's not going to do much anyway. Clarity, don't want to go too much. It's going to look like a weird painting. Vibrance, let's get that up there a little bit. All right, now we're looking good. Now, graduated filter time, let's do it. I've shown you guys how to do this in my previous videos as well. Um, it's gonna be quite a long graduated filter here. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna leave everything for now. I'm going to decrease the highlights because that's the main thing that's going to bring all that uh, clouds back. Exposure, I don't wanna to touch too much because if you go too hard with the exposure, you can see it gives it a really dark look, but also too, it goes from, it's graduated, so it's going to graduate down, and you can tell it kind of um, can take away, and it doesn't look natural, put it that way. So let's, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to put the graduated filter about here. I'm going to decrease the exposure a little bit, and the highlights can stay nice and low. And for now, I'm actually really happy with that. And for the temperature, this is one where I might, might actually go towards the warmer side of things, just to try and get that, um, you know, I, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a little bit more of a evening, you know, sunset sort of a vibe going on here, which I don't mind. And uh, kind of also gives a little bit of an aged look as well. So eh, I'm pretty happy with that actually. Not really going to change too much else. I might just um, increase the vibrance a little bit just to bring some of those greens out. Um, maybe a little bit of a green tint might look a little bit better. So that's when we can use the tint before and after. Much better. Looks a lot nicer. Okay, moving on. We have got this picture that I took. Uh, that one as well was at the same time that I took this one here. So you can actually see just from, you know, Eve, that was pretty much at the same time of day, just with some of the settings that I had and also to, um, you can tell that there was a lot more orange in the sky, a lot more pinks in the sky, depending on the time, um, compared to when I first started with that picture. So that's kind of what I was going for, a little bit more of that light. So in this one, I am going to try and make that orange pop a little bit more. And I was, 
I don't know what I was trying to do here. I think I was shooting through the trees here to get this kind of mountain thing going. So let's see if we can find a nice little frame for this. I'm sure that we will. Probably just try and center it. I like to leave the sides as dark as possible. So it does provide that framing because if you leave it here, for example, it leaves all this kind of space here and it takes your eye away from what you're supposed to be doing, which is, you know, the thing that's supposed to be roughly in the middle. Um, you know, it's, it's our subject. So it has to kind of have our eyes drawn to it. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's go ahead and start playing around with some of these settings. Am I going to change the temperature to blue or to, uh, uh, you know what? If you double tap it, it takes it back to its original setting, by the way. Um, I might move it a little bit more towards the oranges, just a little bit, and then the exposure, let's start playing around with that. So I'm gonna give it a bit more exposure for now. Let's go a little bit of contrast. Doing too much contrast though can make it look like I said in the past, like a painting. So we don't want that. Um, highlights. You know, what do you do here? I mean, you start reducing the highlights and it's going to be way too dark. So let's just increase it a little bit. Sometimes it's just a matter of winging it. Again, increase the shadows, you get the detail. Decrease the shadows, you get the cool, you get the cool kind of silhouette going there. So I'm going to decrease them. That's for sure. Whites, ooh, mm, a little bit, a little bit. And the blacks as well. Ah, let's keep the blacks the same. Clarity, eh, a little bit. Don't want that water to look too weird. And the vibrance, a little bit. Now, I want to I wanna have a look at this HSL slider. So now it's going to be around an orangey sort of a red color. So let, okay, so here we go. So we're in the orange here. I want to just give it a little bit more orange. Like I said, with the last one, the last photo that I did um, with at the same place, it really, you know, when you take photos, especially, I don't know if it's the same with all cameras, but with my camera anyway, and I use a Nikon D5600, and I just find that when I take these photos, it just doesn't capture all of the color. And I don't know, maybe they expect us to do a little bit of editing on it. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's a color profile on the camera. I'm not too sure, but it just doesn't look the way that you see it in real life. So it's all we're doing here. We're just trying to make it look like how it did when I took it. So again, I'm not going to go too crazy with it. Um, you know, it was a slightly darker orangey color. Um, if you can remember, that's what we started with. So I don't want to go too crazy with that. I'm going to give it a little bit of saturation as well. Because you want people to look at this and be like, oh, wow, that's a, you know, what time of the day was that, you know? And, you know, you want people to kind of guess a little bit. Well, how did he get those colors in the sky? And, you know, you want to leave people with a little bit of, little bit of wonder, like, you know, what time of day was that? Where was that? Um, you know, so random thoughts that we have. Uh, moving on, let's go, I'm done. I'm done with that. That looks good, I'm happy. Let's go before, after, looks much better. You know, we did a lot of messing around, but at the end of the day, it's just trying to increase the brightness of a little bit and keep the colors in there. I'm good, I'm happy, I'm happy with that. Last one that we're doing, let's go. Um, first thing we need to do is turn it on its side because I'm not gonna edit it like that. Okay, ah, a picture of a fern, it looks like. So it's off center, first of all. So I'm going to use my framing for Instagram. It's gonna be an Instagram photo for sure. Let's go ahead and make that in the center, roughly. It's a non-symmetrical shape. So good luck trying to center that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a very moody sort of vibe here. I'm going to, I might get, well, these old rocks, like with all the moss and algae and stuff on them, they look really deadly with a little bit of clarity. So let, let's do it. Let's, let's chuck in, let's chuck in, let's, let's keep, keep the exposure the same. I'm gonna give it a little bit of blue because I'm going for a moody vibe here, like I said, a little bit of green. Now, let's go highlights, decrease. Shadows, crush them. Whites, mm, no. Uh, you know what? A little bit of whites, a little bit. And then blacks, crush it. Yes, I like that. 
Now you can see we're starting to get the greens, the dark greens popping, and we haven't even touched the vibrance yet. So, you know, if you were looking at this and it was a, uh, you know, it was night, and, you know, starting to get to night time, this is a real kind of uh, look what you will be uh, viewing when you are there. So let's have a look at the clarity a little bit. So like I said, watch these rocks and watch the algae, especially like around these areas here. You start increasing the clarity and you start to see those, those um, you know, little patterns on the rocks starting to form, especially I'm looking at that rock on the bottom as well because your eye normally goes towards the side or to the bottom and having a look at the framing. So I'm going to just increase the clarity a little bit. I don't know what I'm saying at this point. You know, what, what are we talking about here? You know, but, but you know, people do look at the framing because it, you know, especially if it's interesting, um, but you want them to be looking at this fern. So framing is still interesting. If you have a good frame, makes a good photo. Simple as that. Um, let's go ahead and let's go dehaze. Nah, I'm not gonna dehaze. Vibrance, let's keep the vibrance up. Saturation, a little bit. Done. Now, I don't really like how I've got the light from the back here coming through. What are we gonna do about that? Graduate filter. Let's get rid of it a little bit. Let's go um, exposure. We can keep about the same. Blacks, yeah, um, we can crush the blacks a little bit on that one. Shadows, mm, not really gonna do much. Highlights, yes, get rid of the highlights. So if we can kind of put it at that sort of angle, I think we'll be good. I think we'll be happy with that. That looks good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, before and after. Okay, alrighty. So I'm gonna stop the video recording there for my screen and let's finish off the video. So guys, that's it. That's the end of our editing for today. I'm starting to trip over my words, so it's never a good sign, probably time to stop, probably a good time to stop. But yeah, anyway guys, it's just us hanging out, doing some photo editing. We've got six done today. I've still got a few that I've picked out that I intend on editing over the next couple of weeks. So if you guys wanna see that, you know, click like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. That would be good. Um, I could like these videos because I just kind of sit here, talk to you guys, go through some of the settings and stuff. So if this is, you know, first time seeing some of my videos, you know, if this is something that you want to see, if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, please let me know. The like is normally a good way, easy way to let me know if you are wanting to see more of this stuff. But I just enjoy doing this stuff. You know, I end up with a very satisfying batch of photos. I will be putting all these up on my Instagram as well, these exact ones, how you see them. So I'll probably put them up on the same day that this video goes live. So thank you for watching, guys. I will see you soon for more adventures, more photos, more editing. See you guys in the next one.